first oh. of flavor. Don't be drinking my Red Bull. I was going to drink it. What's your preferred colored Red Bull? Hey, I'm a diverse Red Bull guy, so I just like to change it up. But, um, yeah, the yellow, white, um, blue, I don't even... I think so, um, and then uh, and then uh, watermelon's good. More importantly, I came here to find out who you guys got in the 2022 Embo Bowl on Sunday. The Embo Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. Need an explanation. Oh, this is uh, that's the the Miami Dolphins Jets game. Embo Bowl. Yeah, Embo Bowl. Our tight ends coach and assistant head coach. John Embry, yes. right? Yes. Eldest son, Taylor Embry, running back coach for the Jets. Oh, a little known nugget. And this is, uh, I mean, this is serious consequences for Thanksgivings. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, I live with that all year. Do you go? Do you go with the? Uh, do you go through age, or do you go with beauty? I'm gonna go with both and do John Embry. <laughs> I'm going with Embry too. Yeah. Uh, so we saw Tyreek Hill pop up on the injury report yesterday with mm-hmm. the quad. Is he at all is status at all in question for Sunday, or do you expect him to play? Um, I can say uh, um, with hundred percent conviction, he will play or he won't play, and that's all Saul is getting. No, I mean he's he's doing his. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he he had something come up. Um, we're uh, we're treating it, and um, you know we're very hopeful he'll play. Good. And I, I would understand uh, if you don't want to answer this, of course. But obviously, with Armstead, he didn't practice all week, so we never saw him on the field, and he's been playing through the toe. So fans are curious: is it a similar situation with X, where you're merely resting the groin? but he's going to try to play through it, or is he seriously in question? Again, if you don't want to answer, I understand, but I'm just asking. No, phil- philosophically, um, generally when players don't practice, um, you, don't, you don't play them. Um, like I've told you guys from the beginning, from the onset, that absolutes are not my cup of tea. So um, with players like Armstead and X, guys that have um, – played at a high caliber NFL level for a long time um, there are exceptions so uh, if X is able to go um, kind of like in that Armstead fashion if he's able to go on Sunday I won't treat it like my general philosophy and if he uh, him not um, fully practicing today uh, won't be in um, a component to make that decision on Sunday. He's in that Armstead, um, Allen Iverson practice category. Yeah. Mike, you, uh, you've had some fun with Sala and some of the connections you've had with the Jets this week. I'm curious, do you enjoy this week maybe more than others or how your personal feel is given your connections to the other side? Uh, I, it's, I, I try not to, I try to do my best not to even factor that stuff in. It, it, it is unique because you know people so well. Um, but again, it's the players on the field that decide the game. So I try to, uh, the hardest part is not overthinking it, you know, um, because you, you do know their philosophies to a degree um, and you know they know. So then you can go into that rabbit hole. Um, but for me, uh, I wouldn't say it's anything either way. Um, just because it, I've found in, in the past when I know people, sometimes it it makes me worse, um, because I, because I think of it that way. It's just another opponent to me. Um, and, and I think it's important for the, for the players to feel that too. Same, if I could just follow up briefly, that same token, I think Robert Sala was asked by Jets reporters about you and your style, and he said, even though they've passed a lot, he's a run-first guy at heart, which I think we know, but what would you describe Sala as in his coaching style, if you could pull it down? Okay. Um, he His coaching style is, 
uh, yeah, it, star- it starts the the leadership portion of it starts top down. So his coaching and his philosophy is to be ex- extremely accountable um, to what the players are being told and to what um, uh, they're being asked to do. I would say he is a uh, extremely sound coach that wants his team to play fast with high effort. That's non-negotiable for him, and that's what is cool for me to watch the tape this year. Um, I was able to watch a little bit, you know, uh, last year, um, you know, as a as a friend, kind of look for it and whatever, and I and I saw it there. Um, they're a little healthier this year. They have they've improved some talent, and you're seeing better results because it's a non-negotiable, um, sound um, effort uh, effort team that will uh, always you'll always see 11 players around the ball, and so that philosophically he's a um, sound rules oriented coach that demands and receives uh, fast play from his players. What do you remember uh, maybe liking about Zach Wilson in the scouting process a couple of years ago? Uh, the, you know, very, very elite um, throwing talent, first and foremost. You can see it a little bit. It looks different where it just pops off his hand. Um, and the I think when I was evaluating him, his, I said something before earlier in the week, but I said something about off-platform throws, meaning that he can be in any position and distribute the ball anywhere on the field. Um, it's like there's not that many guys that can do it like him. I think of the, uh, you know, you have Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes that are the bigger guys that can really string it across the field. But as throwers, the only guys that I really see that throw like him are probably um, Aaron and Kyler, but it's similar that way. So you're always intrigued when you get, you're get you looking at a quarterback and you see unbelievable throwing talent. Um, and he's, uh, he, he's, he's special in that way and can make a defense pay uh, any part of the field at any given time. Mike, we've done a lot of four-game assessments of different aspects of the team. How would you assess yourself after four games? Hmm. Well, do you guys have any recall? And I, I've done this before, but um, I I re- would refuse to ever give myself a high grade because um, my assessment of myself is that whatever to always assess my job and to continue to evolve and get better. So, will I ever be like? pumped about the job that I'm doing? No, that's not the nature of the job. The nature of the job, the way I see it and what I'm trying to do for myself is uh, assess decisions um, across the board, which is all-encompassing, and then um, never stop that process of development and and getting better at stuff. So if you're asking me... um, you know, it's gonna probably gonna be the same at three and one as it if it was zero and four or four and zero. So um, bad person to ask. What, what about the way you've uh, you've handled things such as halftime at the Baltimore game? Uh, same answer about you give yourself credit for that because I mean the players could have tensed up or, or whatever. No, you seem to have handled that very well. No, for me personally, I'm not one to give myself much credit at all because. You know, I, I've said it before about a multitude of different um, topics, but like people, for me to take this job, um, I better be adept at doing stuff. There's like, this is not, this job is to service hundreds of people. And, it, and I better, um, when they're, when they're needing me, be able to make the appropriate decisions and handle things the, the right way. So um, anything that you'd be saying, hey, that's, I mean, that's kind of what I expected for myself. Um, that's why you prepare so 
long over, you know, over a decade is a long time when this, this particular jobs on your mind. And, um, at some point when it's not happening, you have to make sure that, okay, well, if it does happen, I better be ready and happy with where I'm at, um, in coaching so that I can do right by the players in the organization that are counting on me. So I'll never, um, yeah, I, I, I knew early that, um, when I was starting the head coaching process, um, here in the off season, I could feel it early that, um, I was prepared for it and I was happy with that. Um, and I can, and I could feel as the next hurdles came where I was calling plays for the first time, I could feel that, um, that I was ready to do that. Um, but what, I'll never really be assessing. It'll always be bad and on all fronts um, because I'm looking for ways to improve. Because if uh, I think Mike Shanahan used to say it to Kyle when he was a little kid, Kyle would say it all the time um, in San Fran um, as a phrase that spoke to him that I've kind of adapted is if, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. One of two things are always happening. Anything you can tell us in terms of an update on how Tua's doing? Um, no, that he's uh, he's been diligently um, uh, going through the process. Um, he's he's right now he's still in the he's still in the protocol. Obviously, um, he's there's a several outside specialists that we're also uh, utilizing um, and. You know, we'll, we'll just take it from there. But happy that he's, you know, you get to see him every day. Um, and he's, uh, he, it, it's nice when I walk down the hallway and I hear, what up, Beast? Which is, for whatever reason, he calls me Beast all the time. I don't think I give off the Beast vibe, but, um, and, and we'll just take it um, day by day from there. Is he traveling? He will not be traveling uh, to this game. Um, for uh, recovery purposes. And have you and Chris made an firm decision that he won't be going on IR today or tomorrow? Um, yeah, he won't be. Um, he won't be going on IR today or tomorrow. Yeah, but still, still getting information and progressing through that. Anything you can tell us about two guys who have practiced little or not at all this week, Crossing and Waddle? Um. So. Uh, we'll be checking out Crossin today and seeing how he how he goes, but we're just being careful not to uh, to push the envelope. And uh, as um, Coach Ulbrich and Saul will be pumped to hear, you know, I'm just hoping for the best with Jalen Waddle. <laughs> Mike, uh, sorry. Um. I'm curious, and hopefully this doesn't get too much to game plan. With a left-hander like Tua going to a right-hander like Teddy, do you have to flip play calls at all as a play caller uh, for certain plays? Oh, uh, you try. You try to. If, if you do have tendencies to do things one direction because of that, um, defense generally picks up on it. So, you know, we run. Um, you know, two all the time. Run bootlegs to the right. Um, we, we kind of even everything out. So we don't tend to have too many one way orchestrations. Um, so now it, it doesn't really change anything. It, the hardest part was actually learning, um, left, left-handed quarterback footwork to coach and, to, and it's just reverse, but it just, once you got that, um, done for the coaches, it didn't affect the players at all. It didn't affect Tua. He'd he'd been throwing with his left for his whole life. So, um, outside of that, doesn't it doesn't really change anything at all, um, to be honest. Mike, how has Brandon Shell been progressing? Good. He had a good uh, week of practice. Um, been very impressed with his commitment to own the scheme. You know, it's always challenging when you jump in um, to a. Uh, uh, moving operation that's already full tilt um but he's shown his professionalism um he improves on stuff every day which is what 
you know, um, my base bottom line is for all players, that's all I'm really concerned with is them continuing to improve. Um, and uh, he, he's done that, and um, I'm very happy we have him here. Are you uh, ex your secondary has some problems? You talked about Zach Wilson. Are you expecting heavy pass from from the Jets? The the way I know um, the Jets and Coach Lafleur uh, is I'm expecting heavy whatever's working. You know, uh, and it's not a, not a, like honestly, like they have the ability to live in the. Um, live in the run game. They've they've ran for um, in the last calendar year. I think they've had over 150 yards rushing. Um, I know they had a great stretch. They might have the last six games or so. They might have been like third in the league in rushing um, last season. Um, and they've done. Uh, and if it, it's impossible to run, he'll definitely pass it. Um, I know he's uh, tries. He looks at the world from the quarterback's perspective as he should. So he'll always try to call a balanced game um, so that you uh, can't play for pass and put, um, put the quarterback in harm's way. So, um, but I, I, I also know that if he's running the ball and it's not working, he's just not going to run it to run it, but he'll, he'll try to get an evilly call game as best he can. Um, as I know from experience when he would, uh, last year when you text me and with exclamation points and tell me I got 35 runs in exclamation point. Thank you guys. Thanks. All right. Appreciate it.